Thank you. I'm, I'm Mike Rounds out of South Dakota. Before we do a Q&A with you, uh, let's just recap where we're at. So far you've heard that Obamacare has now had five years to try to prove itself to the American public. You've heard that all of us in just the last election cycle were elected, committed to repealing and replacing Obamacare with something which was more competitive in nature, one that would allow the states to make some of their own decisions about what they wanted for health care an opportunity to try to slow down the increasing costs of health care. We've seen what's happened so far, the, and as you've heard once again today, uh, the story that you could keep your insurance has been found to be not true. The fact that you can't just keep your doctor. We found that that is not the case. When it came time to talking about the premium increases, we found that both those individuals who had received insurance coverages through their employers or through an individual plan, in both cases, the prices are up. Our message today is, is that we got the message when we were running for election. We're hoping that part of the message that we can share with everybody else is, is that we're not going to stop until we fix a lot of the problems that we find within the health care industry today. Nothing in Obamacare, nothing within the Affordable Care Act was designed to slow down the increasing costs with the exception of one part. And that was Section 3403 of the Act, which, which created the Independent Payment Advisory Board. But you know what that did? That talked about how we were going to slow down the number of procedures that would be made available to people that were on Medicare. So rather than talking about how we were going to take care of the health insurance coverages for people that were under the age of 65, this particular plan actually impacts Medicare as well. So our message today is, is that we're not going to give up. And the first step that we've taken, some folks right now are wondering why we haven't already fixed the problem. You can't do it unless you've got a president who's going to work with you, and you can't do it unless you've got a or a supermajority of 67 percent in the in the in in both the House and the seven and the Senate. But what we can do is, is we can start by passing a budget resolution, and we know the president's not going to sign the budget resolution, but it provides tools for us in which to impact the implementation of health care, and it provides us something else. 12 opportunities in 12 separate appropriation bills in which we can impact how money at the federal level is being spent. It's going to take us a year to get it done, but between now and September, you will see changes. And the changes that you will see will impact not just Obamacare, but other uh, aspects of the federal budget as well. So we think we've got a good plan. We're very, very pleased with our leadership in terms of the plan that they've laid out for us. We're a part of a team. We understand that. And we know that it's not going to happen in just the next couple of weeks. If we are successful in King versus Burwell, and if they come back through and they challenge us to find a way to fix it, we think we're in a great position to offer not only a bridge during the time frame in which this man is still president, but also an opportunity to offer the states a better plan than what they've got today, and one which gives them a chance to literally go back in and prove to all of the other states that they've got a better idea than somebody else. The laboratories that the states are can be used to our advantage in Washington, D.C. With that, I think we'll take your questions.